The first Pokemon is a hotly debated topic across the internet. Bulbasaur, Rhydon, Mew, Arceus? Each of these answers represents the problem with the question, or rather, the fun of discussing it. How do you interpret the word first? Are we talking about the first Pokemon in Pokemon lore or biology? The first Pokemon indexed into the game in, say, Rhydon? Or perhaps we're talking about the first Pokemon registered in the Pokedex, number 001, Bulbasaur. Wait, I thought 001 was Chikorita, but then maybe that's because my Pokedex is a Jotonian Pokedex and not a Kanto one. And you see the problem here? The oldest Pokedex that we have that we know about is that in the Hisui region, Professor Lavington's Pokedex, which I suppose would make the first Pokemon Rowlet. Interesting, hadn't thought about that before, but even that doesn't really make sense, because that doesn't make Rowlet the first Pokemon, that makes Rowlet the first Pokemon recorded by people. And people have recorded Pokemon in all sorts of ways. We've seen ancient depictions of Pokemon in statues, and according to the Pokedex itself, there are recordings of cyclists that are being ridden on by people that are at least 10,000 years old, so that must be cave paintings or writings elsewhere. Gladol was said to be made by people 30,000 years ago, and because it was made by people, that is sort of a person recording a Pokemon as they create it, because they create the clay doll before it becomes a clay doll. So you see the problem here. Using the Pokedex is pointless to use it as a Pokemon's recorded existence, because to get to the first one, you want the first recorded Pokemon. And the first recorded Pokemon weren't even recorded by people. They were recorded by themselves when they left their fossilized imprints in the ground. This takes us to the oldest known fossil Pokemon, Aranit, who is over 500 million years old, leaving behind claw fossils, representations that it was here that are still findable today. Technically, that's the oldest recorded Pokemon that ever lived. But we know that there are Pokemon in the lore of Pokemon that are older than Aranith, older than 500 million years ago, regardless of whether they were recorded or not, which is why I've always hated the recording recorded answer and not gone that way before with Bulbasaur. So let's look at the Pokemon lore. There are really two options here, the biological answer or the godly answer, whether biologically we're talking about Mew, the ancestor Pokemon said to have the DNA of all Pokemon, the question really here is whether the word all includes the god Pokemon, Arceus, supposedly the creator of Pokemon life. Arceus itself, the Pokemon, isn't actually the god, it's just the god Pokemon. It's not taken its godly infinity energy life forcey form. In Pokemon Legends Arceus, Arceus actually addresses the player talking about how it's kind of taken this form, and I suspect it's actually taken the form it has as a kind of white equine creature with golden accents to mimic the hero that met Arceus before using Weirdeer, a similarly white equine creature with, you know, obviously they're not horses, but you know, you get what I'm saying. Arceus has made itself to look in the image of a Pokemon that's more appealing to people because Weirdeer was one of the Pokemon that the first human that kind of interacted with it had on their team as actually like their main Pokemon, um, and which is why Weirdeer was introduced in Pokemon Legends Arceus, looking kind of not too dissimilar to Arceus. I think that was on poor purpose. I think that's intentional. All of that said though, you might be asking, how do we know this isn't Arceus's true form? And that's because of the ring around its waist, a ring that typically means godly restraint in the world of Pokemon. We see this ring formed from the red chain in Dialga and Palkia before. We see it on type Null, uh, restricting its power, stopping it from becoming Silvalli. If Arceus has it around its Itself, it must mean that this is a constraint stopping it from being the full ultimate Arceus. And we know that Arceus is a Pokemon made up of multiple parts, including all of the various plates that are all over the place, and Dialga, Palkia, and Giratina, who in their origin forms resemble Arceus. I suspect all of these Pokemon are part of Arceus, meaning that, yeah, probably it did create all of Pokemon life. The other godly Pokemon that are tied to this that bring balance to all of this are Mesprit, Uxie, and Azelf, Pokemon that look like Mew. So my suspicion has always been that Mew came from these Pokemon, and so definitely Arceus was first. At least that's my thinking. And before we start getting pedantic in terms of first, in terms of like time and saying, ah, oh, but actually Dialga might be first because it's the, the ruler of time. And can you have a before time? Can you have a first? I actually think that Arceus is also capable of those powers and probably started time and used our Dialga and Palkia to, to govern them. Although, again, that idea started time. Can you start time? Does time have a start? Or was it always just there? These questions are hard for theoretical physicists, let alone theoretical poker tubers, so take what I'm saying with a little grain of time salt here. But if there is a before time, it must be a universe that is before 
hours. There's that idea, of course, that the Big Bang, an explosion of, from the singular, from a single point, probably came from the universe having condensed on itself and blasting out again. I like this idea. I don't know how much actual scientific grounding it has, but we sort of see this idea in the Futurama episode to the late Philip J. Fry, who has a one-way time machine. In this episode, Fry gets inside the time machine because he wants to skip to the end of his day to go on his date with Leela, and he goes forward in time, but he misses the date. He overshoots it, and so in order to not miss the date, he keeps on going forward in time until the very end of time, until the point when all of reality collapses into a singularity, and then time starts again in a loop. He is then able to make his date later in time because everything that did happen before will happen again because ultimately the universe is made up of a finite amount of things. So if you cycle through it enough times with a finite amount of things, an infinite amount of times, everything will repeat, including the date that he was supposed to go on. Whether this is time looping around itself or an endless string of universes one after the other, we don't know. But if it is the latter, then it could be the case that some of those universes in the Pokemon world are represented by Ultra Space, space that is a little bit different to ours, only traversable to via wormholes. Set in different universes where everything's the same but just a little bit different, parallel worlds where the Alola region has been eaten up by a Guzzlord, a dark parallel version of Zygarde with its little miniature head on top and then the body head the, with the four appendages, they're both dragon, they live in the same cave, we've talked about this before on the channel, these Pokemon are different universe versions of each other, perhaps the pattern that make up the universe were repeating themselves, but not quite close enough because everything's a little bit different. In some of those universes, no humans exist. In others of them, humans do exist side by side with Ultra Beasts, as we see in Cartana's world. Or perhaps we get what we get in Ultra Megalopolis, where the sun has been eaten by Necrozma, and so life has to adapt very differently. How many different variations of the universe are there before ultimately you end up going from sun version to moon version? If all of these concepts are true in Pokemon, then which Pokemon is the first Pokemon? Perhaps it's an Ultra Beast? I don't know which the most primordial looking Ultra Beast is. Maybe it's still Arceus. Maybe this version, the main continuity of the Pokemon world, is the first version. Maybe it's Bulbasaur in Pokemon Red and Blue. The first Pokemon that you ever might encounter. Or it's a Pokemon that exists outside of this universe where the rules of time and space work differently. Not that they don't exist, they just work differently, allowing their time to be before our time. The alternate dimension, where the unknown exists, would seem to be a good example of this. And I've talked on the channel before about how the unknown might, in their lettered forms, represent the code that makes up the digital Pokemon world, kind of like the Pokemon games exist in a simulation theory. We also know that Arceus has the power to use the unknown to change the material world. And we also know that, according to the Canalive libraries, the mythology of Sinnoh, if it is to be believed, started with a swirling chaos of nothing, a vortex from which an egg was created. And from that egg contained the life force of everything in the Pokemon world. Is it possible that the egg was placed there by the unknown, in which case the unknown are first? And if you put them in alphabetical order, then I guess unknown A is first, but that seems silly because the alphabet was made by people, and so I don't know that the unknown have a concept of alphabetical order. To them, that's just what they look like. But all of this is me boggled, because while the unknown are, seem to be certainly Pokemon in some way or another, there's nothing determining them as not being, the Ultra Beasts are sometimes thought of as not Pokemon. Same too with the Paradox Pokemon, which have been said in some dubious magazine to be a billion years old. But I won't get into any of that. So perhaps not the Ultra Beasts, although I think they probably are Pokemon because they are catchable in a Pokeball, which kind of implies that they are just Pokemon from other dimensions, or other di different points in time. What is the first Pokemon? That's the other part of the question that's up for debate. Not the word the first, but Pokemon. What defines a Pokemon? Is it the thing in the TV show, the card game? Are they both Pokemon? And if that's the case, you go back to the first medium, the first Pokemon that was indexed. Ah, Rhydon. Of course, its statues are everywhere in the game, and we've all heard it before, that the first Pokemon indexed into the Pokemon game is Rhydon. But at that point, here's my question, was it actually a Pokemon? I think there's a better answer for this. You might think it's obvious, it's Rhydon, it's a Pokemon, we all know it as a Pokemon, and yes, it's a Pokemon today, but when it was first programmed into the game, was it one? 
It may have been in the minds of the creators, but legally, was it a Pokemon? Because what is a Pokemon? Pokemon is intellectual property. It is the copyright owned by the Pokemon Company, Creatures Inc., Game Freak, Nintendo, maybe. I'm not really sure 100% how that works. But legally speaking, a Pokemon is something protected by copyright law. So what was the first legally protected Pokemon? For this one, I definitely needed some help. And so I turned to my lovely friend, Terabee Joe, who told me that, yes, the copyrights do exist from back in the day. And the first Pokemon legally protected by copyright of all the Pokemon, though spelled a little bit differently was you're not gonna believe this it was Mew Mew was the first copyrighted Pokemon so despite the fact that I don't think Mew was the first Pokemon because I think Arceus predates it in the law legally speaking Mew was a Pokemon obviously way before Arceus but before even Rhydon Rhydon was programmed first sure but at that point was it a Pokemon and if you say yes then I have to ask why the point when the Pokemon was programmed into the game what about when it was drawn into documents? Or heck, what about when the creators, what about when Satoshi Tajiri sat down long before he could, had even conceived of Pokemon and scribbled out one or two of those designs beforehand? After all, how many of you are artists and creatives? How many of you have doodled a character? And how many of you have brought that character to life in some further medium later down the line? I know for my series, Pokemon Tempest, many of the creatures there are creatures that I had been thinking about since I was like six. One of them I actually doodled when I was six. That's the main legendary Pokemon. But to make it a Pokemon Tempest creature, while not legally protected, to be fair, um, was it not that when I first drew it? At what point did it become that? When I put it into the series? When it's under legal copyright? If you go back far enough, people have been imagining creatures since really the beginning of humanity. The Epic of Gilgamesh is about 4,000 years ago and is considered the first kind of notable literature to have survived this long and features Mbabu the Terrible fighting Gilgamesh as a sort of monstrous creature person. This is kind of a Pokemon before Pokemon. Pokemon are just pocket monsters. This would be the first monster, or at least the first monster written about in literature, because many Pokemon take their forms from animals, in which case you have to go back to the beginning of biological life, to the first animal that exists in the real world that inspired a Pokemon, which I guess would make Rienculus or Solosis the first Pokemon because they are single-celled organisms or inspired by just single cells, and single-celled organisms are the first life to have probably Probably existed here on the planet, barring aliens. At this point, I have to recommend a video that I was watching in re as research for this video by Cregan Ford, who seems to go into like the histories of mythology and seems to be kind of a, a mythology expert and talks about the mythology of dragons, the story including these kind of monstrous snake scaled creatures that ultimately uh, have additional powers that are non human in nature. Cregan Ford says that evidence of dragons can be seen as far back as 70,000 years ago in South Africa. I'll leave a link to that video down below. And this idea of scaly snakes is something to be thought about as something to be transformed and mythologized makes sense for people. Because people, before we were standing upright, before we were the creatures that we are today, started out a lot smaller. And snakes may well have been our prime predators. Avoiding them and giving special significance to snakes is an evolutionary tactic that would have been very beneficial for us. To fear them, yes, but to also let our imaginations run wild with them. This would be the first creation, perhaps, in our mind of a monster. And when was that? Well, that would have been millions of years ago. Huh. So there you go. Sorry, what was the question? This is Ash Ketchum. You just watched a video by Bird Keeper Toby. That makes you a Pokemon master. Just the biggest thank you to those of you who are supporting this channel on Patreon, and a special thank you to the big patrons of the month, Jed Rubin, Chamanda Anzabal, Anthony Lee, The Elgator, and Michael Hornshoe. Thank you so much.